Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliances, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliances. Well, we just had on the CEO and president of North Scottsdale Wealth Advisors, David Kahn, who could be reached at nswadvs.com. Later on in the show, we're going to have the founder of CNBC, the TiVo president, and now he's with winview.com and the ending the show with the founder of Teespring. Incredible. And if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do teespring.com. So let's get started with our next hero because so much is going on with what, everything that he's doing because he is the author, the king make, of The Kingmaker and many other books, Tony Bridwell, who's also with Ryan Inc. You could reach Tony at Tony Bridwell. Dot com. Now, Tony, I just I got to ask you, because so many things I've, I mean, thank you too so much for being in the studio. But tell me first about I've got this book in front of me, The Newsmaker, a leadership story of honor and love that you wrote. Tell me about that book. Uh, so thank you for actually picking that book up and holding it like that. That was that was that was pretty stylish. Look, this is the third in a series of six called the Maker Series. And the first one was the Difference Maker and the King Maker, and so the Newsmaker is out. And it's a, it's a continuation, but they're parables, right? So they're, they're stories that teach lessons along the way. I mean, for millennial, that's how we've learned, through stories and through storytelling. And so it's a group of characters that have challenges and struggles and skin knees, just like the rest of us. And in the process, they learn something. And so there's three key takeaways in this particular book. We put two of them on the cover. My publisher and I went back and forth on one of the key words on the cover. Uh, you know, it's a leadership story of honor and love. Try to find the try to find a book out there, a leadership book out there that talks about love. And the prim, one of the premise, look, there's three key premises in this story. To to really be a solid leader, there's three things you need to think about. One, you need to lead from love. Two, you need to forgive frequently. And then three, you need to serve with honor. And and, and that's really the that's really the crux of it. I mean, in our society today, I got to tell you, if we just leaned into some of these things, these key concepts, just a little bit more, how much better would we be? Just treating people with honor and dignity, having compassion for people in the marketplace, and then forgiving frequently. You know, I, I talk about in, in, the, in the story, when we choose not to forgive, we really create two prisons, one for ourselves and one for the other person. And it, and it drops relationships, it lowers productivity, it lowers engagement in the marketplace. And it, it's just, it, it's, it's a crusher of the human spirit. What's the best way to get the word out there, though, to really tell people that, you know, because people get in such heated emotions. Yeah. And the thing is, is, you know what? And you hear people sometimes yell, I'm never going to forgive oh, you. Oh, yeah. I know it. it, and, it and it's hard. And, you know, we've all been in that spot. I mean, for crying out loud, I've been in that spot, too. And it is very emotional. And often it requires us to stop and take a look internally. And, and look, we talk about we talk about this in the story in our life, in, in, in the chapter of our day. Every day we get up, we get a clean sheet to write our story from. And we always have two choices. And as a writer, I always think about the story arc. I always think about the story line that I'm going to write. And I really, in my life, every time I get up, every single morning, every single one of us in this room and everybody that's listening, you basically have two storylines to choose from as you go throughout your day. You can choose a storyline of love and compassion or a storyline of judgment. But those are your basic two choices because you can walk in the room and immediately start judging everyone in the room. Or you can have compassion and empathy for the other people in the room. And a lot of times that requires us to look internally at ourselves and go, how would I want to be treated in this particular situation? And again, we're talking with Tony Bridwell, and you can reach Tony Bridwell by going to TonyBridwell.com. He's an author. He's, in fact, too, he's the chief people officer and senior vice president at Ryan Inc., where you work in global human resources because you're listening to me. David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Radio Show. Again, where entrepreneurs align and be part of the community, go to alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. But, Tony, I have to tell you, I think that being part of the HR and being chief people officer has got to be really, out of all the various executive roles out there, 
one of the most challenging. Why? Because you are working and dealing with people from so many backgrounds. How in the world do you do it so and true. make them happy? Yeah, it's so true. Well, the key is is you can't make everybody happy, right? But what you can do is how you treat everybody. And if you treat everybody with dignity and respect and compassion, then you can create an environment. You can create a culture that breeds that. And, and look, being the chief people officer uh, for a global company, you're absolutely right, David. I mean, I come in contact every single day with just about every emotion you can imagine, every situation that you can imagine. And you, look, to sit in the chair, you got to love people right off the bat. You got to love people, but you also have to have an understanding of what people are going through. And then you put things in place to help guide them, direct them, and really help them unlock their potential in life. And if you do that, you're going to see them grow and flourish. Look, they're going to skin their knee. Every single one of us is going to skin their knee. And, and when they do, you pick them up and you move them forward. Now, what advice? We have many listeners out there that may have one employee, yeah. may have hundreds of thousands of employees yeah. in that. What is, though, the best way to really be able to connect, again, whether you've got one or hundreds of thousands, because what ends up happening, Tony, as you know, you end up being responsible for the employee, but then all the things that are going on, you don't know what's going on in their home, what happened yep. when they just walked on, and those type of things, but to keep people motivated and also part of the high-functioning culture. Yeah, yeah. No, th great question. Look, we, we always say there's a couple things you got to do to get right if you're going to have any organization. I don't care if it's nonprofit, for profit, governmental, it doesn't matter. There's a couple things you got to do. One, you need to know what it is that you're going to be accountable for, right? What are the results? Are they clearly defined? You don't want any more than three or four results, but you want them clearly defined. There's three things you always got to pay attention to. Are they memorable? Three or four. Look, our brain is wired. If we get more than five things, we're going to lose it because the, the research is just tremendous out there. Anything more than five, we're going to lose it. You want three or four is kind of that sweet spot. So you need memorable results. They also need to be measurable. Uh, you would be shocked if I told you how many people – I've come in contact with over my career from consulting and doing this that will say, oh, yeah, we got a result. I say, oh, great, what is it? And they'll tell me, and I say, how do you measure that? And they say, ah, we haven't quite figured that out yet. you got to have something measured. You can't move what you can't measure. And then the third thing is it needs to be, and this one's critical, it needs to be meaningful. And what I mean by that is every single person in your organization needs to be able to put a fingerprint on how they impact that, and it goes right back to purpose. I need to know that what I do is meaningful, and this is not a new concept. I mean, Viktor Frankl wrote about it uh, in 1945, Man's Search for Meaning. We are hardwired to have meaning in life. And so if you get those three things right, right off the bat, you're on the right track, and then you want to set your culture in place around that. So you get aligned around the results you want to deliver. Uh, they've got to be memorable measurable and meaningful and then you align the culture around your values and beliefs that guide you every single day you do that you get those two things right and you're setting yourself up for success in long term we've got a little less than a minute left tony but it's I not need enough time a, we uh, need more time you know what we need a few hours <laughs> and your motivation i think we can last more than a few hours all right so with children you know all parents want their children to really be successful and whether they're going to go ahead and work for someone or they're going to go ahead and be a leader. Mm. What kind of advice or secrets, though, would you share maybe with parents to help guide their children into being, whether they're going to work for someone, to be a good employee, to be uh, motivated, to be able to find that sense of meaning? Because guess what? They may not have read your book, yeah. and they may not have you as a manager. Yeah, this is, um, and, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to tell you comes from scar tissue and skin knees. Right, Because if I had this when I was much younger, 20, 30 years younger, it might have been a little bit different path. But who knows, I wouldn't have written three books because a lot of the books come from skin knees. Three things any parent needs to just keep in mind. One, consistent. Be consistent in, in your communication. Be consistent in how you speak and be consistent in, in what you do. If you say yes, make yes, be yes. Be consistent. And then you can't communicate too little. 
you constantly got to be talking. You constantly got to having conversations. And so, and it's, it almost sounds cliche that, oh, communicate. Yeah, I talk to my kids. No, I'm talking, having conversations. And the third one, which is the most important one, the one I missed until I was well in my 40s, you need to be vulnerable. Your kids need to know it's okay to fail, right? Too often, and I love the room, superheroes, too often we set ourselves up to be a superhero that never fails. And if we set that bar so high, our children will come up behind it and realize, I can't live up to that because I never see mom, I never see dad fail. And ultimately, they set themselves up for failure in the future. We've got to be vulnerable. They've got to know it's okay to skin your knee. Well, Tony, you certainly know how to choose your storyline. Pick up Tony Bridwell's book, The Newsmaker, A Leadership Story of Honor and Love. Tony, you're absolutely an inspired leader. You work to create solid culture and develop high-performance employees and great leaders. That's a hero. TonyBridwell.com. This is David Kogan with Alliances.